Good afternoon, everybody. Um, if you guys can all take a seat and get ready, unless you're getting cheese or crackers or anything, feel free. I'm more or less just the welcoming act. Um, my name is Jason Hunter. I'm the acting executive director here at the Mass High Greater Brockton Workforce Board. And the main purpose of me standing in front of you is just to say welcome and to truly say thank you for participating on either the internship side or accepting an internship side. Did you say something, Shalane? You can, can you hear me back there now? I'm going to extend this to you. Um, so truly just thank you for being here. Thank you for being a part of the summer. Um, and we wish, well, I hope you guys have a great night. And please make your introductions on the way out. Please say hello to me. I hope that you guys all win an award. I know we can't all win, but I think you guys all win an award just participating this much during the summer, as much as I saw from the outside anyway. But uh, my first job wasn't great. I stuffed the inserts in newspapers, so those, those really small, annoying things you rip out of the newspaper and throw on the ground. I stuffed those for about eight hours every Saturday and Sunday. I hope that you guys all had a much better experience than I did because it was an awful job and paid very poorly. But I hope that all the employers in the room made a, quite the difference. And again, thank you very much for being here. And I'll toss it over to David Vincent for the festivities. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. How y'all doing today? Good. How y'all feeling today? Good. All right, great. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just intro the event. I'm actually very excited to be here, not only just because the summer is over, at least for me, but to be able to see all of you guys here today to celebrate each other, celebrate the community that we're from, and to just be able to impact one another as we go into the fall and into the year. Um, but I'm truly, truly happy to be here. I want to just extend a warm welcome to each and every one of you. Uh, many of you guys may not be familiar with me, but I'm the Director of Youth Employment at Mass High Greater Brockton Workforce Board. And so I want to thank you guys for just coming in to this uh, environment. Thorny Lee, thank you Thorny Lee for uh, hosting this event. And so I wanted to just take a moment for you guys to just look at each other to the left, look to the right, and say thank you for being here. <laughs> to the youth in the room, even those of you that couldn't join us today, I want to share a remarkable fact that you all did not know. For this summer, there were approximately 800 individuals that signed up for our summer jobs program. But there isn't 800 people in this room, right? We were only able to employ about 220 students. So that means that you guys were selected to be in this program. Think about that. 800 applied. But those of you in the room were selected to be a part of the program. So I'm actually very excited that you guys were able to be a part of our program, to experience this summer with us. And I want you guys to just give yourself another round of applause. That statistic speaks volume about the importance of opportunities, the one that you've been a part of this summer. It speaks volumes about how fortunate you were to be selected in this program. It emphasizes the significance of taking part of a program not only that provides employment, but also imparts valuable skills, knowledge, experiences that shapes your future in profound ways. In a world teeming with possibilities, your decision to engage in this summer jobs program showcases your commitment to growth and dedication to embracing changes that can pave your way for success. So as we celebrate the conclusion of this summer jobs journey, let's celebrate the journey you've embarked on for the rest of your lives. The experiences you gained, the lessons you learned, and the connections you made are all building blocks that continue to contribute to your growth and your impact on the world. 
So once again, I commend you all, each and every one of you, for your dedication, your passion, and commitment. And let's cherish this moment that we have together. Let's cherish this moment and inspire each other to continue to strive for excellence the way that we do. So thank you to all of you that have participated, but thank you to all of you that have come here today. So give yourself a round of applause. So without further ado, I want to just thank and recognize my team this summer. Without you guys, I couldn't have done it. So I want to just have them just stand up. My team members that were a part of the summer jobs program, just stand up. I want to recognize you guys. Stand up, please. Mike, Carolina, Tyra, Rachel, Delisa. Thank you. I just want. They put in a lot of work last year. It was very rough for us, but we came back, and I think this year we, we killed it. So I just wanted to thank them. I also want to thank those uh, that you guys don't see behind the scenes, uh, the individuals that I call the money people, which is Lynn Famerlaro and Michelle Ahern. They actually are our payroll department, and they are the ones that actually get you guys paid. So I want to thank them. Come on. Give me a All right, so let's get this party started. So I want to introduce the hosts of the evening. Uh, first, I'm going to read uh, their bios, and then I'll have them come up. So uh, shining from the city of champions, Jasmine Davids, affectionately known in the community as For Real, is a phenomenon. Being the founder and CEO of Fields of For Real, a mental and spiritual wellness, has allowed the artist, writer, and creator to flourish in her purpose. Her vision is to continue to uplift, influence, inspire, to live their best life unapologetically. She is an icon in the city that evidently breeds them. Visit for real, outfit, visit fieldsofforreal.com to stay on top of the dates with events, blogs, and other beautiful content that will leave you in a happy place. Fields of Real. Next, I want to introduce Nick, 20 years, 28 years of age from Brockton, award-winning public speaker, entrepreneur, mental health advocate, content creator, and owner of only The Motivated. His mission is to impact, inspire, encourage, and captivate the masses through his powerful messages showing that all is possible when you have a strong, unbreakable mindset and belief. Featuring in numerous publications such as TEDx Magazine, The Source, California Gazette, Poetic Stories, New York Weekly, American Reporter, Chicago Journal, and many more. Let's welcome Nick Loretta. How are you? I see like, I'm going to estimate maybe 100 people, 80 to 100 people in here right now. So I'm going to ask that question again, and I need to hear 80 to 100 people, all right? Hello, everybody. How are you doing today? I am so excited to be here. Um, as it was mentioned, my name is Jasmine Davids, affectionately known in the community as For Real. I am super grateful that you all completed such a phenomenon. Give it up for yourselves for that. I'm not going to go too much more into who I am because the bio was already mentioned. Um, I'm going to allow for my co-host here to give a warm welcome also. How we doing, man? Shout out family. We good? We doing some energy tonight? We good? We feeling good all right? We feeling good? Listen, you guys know me. I'm an energy guy. Well, you don't know that yet because I didn't tell you. I just told you. So I'm an energy guy. I love energy. I feed off energy. So if you guys are kind of dim and low, I'm going to be dim and low. So if y'all are excited to be here, if you guys are alive and grateful, I need you to hear amen. Amen. You guys, amen. You guys happy to be here? I need, I need some clapping. Can we get some clapping? Amen. I love it. 
give a huge shout out to the team at Mass High for having us here. It's an absolute pleasure to see you guys get these awards. You guys should be proud of yourself. If you're proud of yourself, I want you to give yourself a round of applause. You get that? If you're proud of yourself, give yourself that round of applause. Because sometimes we don't acknowledge ourselves for the, for the accomplishments, the things that we do in our lives. It's easy to cave in on what life can do to us, right? But you've got to give yourself some praise and credit because believe it or not, you're just beginning your journey. Things are about to unravel for you that you probably never thought would come true. So you've got to give yourself that credit. It's easy to allow ourselves to think, oh, well, we're not doing enough. Like, I'm only 18, 19 years of age. Like, I'm just beginning my life. But really, like, you, none of us have it all figured out. I'm 28, and sometimes I think I don't even have it all figured out. But that's the part of the, that's basically the part of the journey of life, is you just go as you go. But give yourself that credit. Don't beat yourself up. Don't be down on yourself. This is your day. This is, you only get one chance at this. So literally enjoy the moment, enjoy the people you have around you, and just be yourself. Be yourself. I encourage that immensely. Be yourself, don't be something you're not, and just enjoy the moment. So you guys ready to get this going? Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Listen, I'm all about energy, right? Y'all ready for this, right? All right, let's go. Let's get it going. All right, so to get this party started, who likes free stuff? Next question I got for you. 
since we're in Brockton, you guys should know this. It's an easy one. None of you guys don't know this. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of concerned. What's the zip code of Brockton? Listen, listen, there's two, but you can say one of them. I just need one. If y'all are really from Brockton, you would notice, because I know some people don't even know the zip code of Brockton. My man back there, black shirt, black shirt right there. Yeah, that's one of them. Come on up, man. for y'all then I'm gonna get to the panel discussion. You guys like it so far? What do y'all want to win something? No? You guys got no energy today. That's crazy. Like can we get some energy in here? Like some clapping, some yelling, like can we get something out of these things? That's all we need is just something. Something. Alright listen, this is another easy one. I'm gonna be really shocked if none of you guys know this. Who is the statue at Brockton High School at the football field? Who is that statue? Let me give you another chance my man the black shirt right here. You said who? Nope. Nope. You're close. I'm here right here. Roger Marciano. Come on up, my man. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. today. He is an impactful man. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you're going to find out right now. Royal L. Raiden with Revolution to the School. The next panelist is somebody I have the pleasure of talking to on a personal basis daily. She is a phenomenon, an icon, and if you really get to talk to her, she will change your life with one conversation. Alright, so we're going to bring up Janae Murphy with Financial Therapy. Next person we're going to bring up, I met this man over again with some food earlier. He's, he's a little tall, he's looking a little snazzy today. I got to give him some credit, got to give him some credit. So this man, I'm excited to hear what he has a little more to do because it just says his title, but I'm a little more excited to hear what he has to offer. So we're going to bring up next my man, Marvin Francois, Realtor of Rock. Definitely wise beyond her age. 
and she's going to lead this panel and give you guys the feels for real, okay? Her name is Mara Barada, so give it up for her. I would say I'm going to give you a rest, but can I get a drum roll, please, for my family? <laughs> now, let's not be discriminatory. I may be a little young, but I don't want any less energy than you be giving the people this afternoon. A large theme of youth works, right, is empowering the future leaders of not only the people that you're sitting with, but the youth of Brockton. Can anybody, anybody in the audience right now, Tell me what they would define as a leader or leadership. Anybody? Oh, now it's pin job time. You guys to be able to pay that forward. 
only way that you guys can pay that forward is if I do my part, if we all do our part, to make sure that you have the tools, the skills, the knowledge to make sure that you guys are successful. So again, thank you all for having me. I'm excited to be here. Having me here. My name is Marvin Francois. I'm a realtor. I uh, built houses as well. Mentor to some. And uh, yeah, I'm just happy to be here. Uh, I grew up in Brockton. I'm 20. I'm still in college. And uh, yeah, excited to be here. As you heard, I'm, I'm still a student. I don't have an established career yet. But I am president of a nonprofit financial center. I'm a financial literacy and STEM organization that basically just teaches kids, one, how to understand how life works, and two, how to apply it to a daily basis. I even got a couple of my students there in the back. I want to also thank Natai for this opportunity because sometimes we don't get the opportunity to be faced with people who we need to hear from. Not necessarily you want to, but you need to hear from. Um, but my name is Janae Murphy. I am the owner and CEO of Financial Therapy, LLC. My initiative for that company is to make sure we have a safe space to speak about money. Because a lot of times we're in risky situations and we're just following a trend. And then we don't know how to find money we're losing unnecessarily and unknowingly. And Hence, making safer moves with our money to be that rich self that we're trying to be. So, I help you get rich, essentially. Uh, I too want to thank Ness Haya uh, for working with me and giving me the opportunity to work with everyone in here uh, over the summer and I believe since 2013. I'm very grateful for the opportunity. My name is uh, Royal Aradin. I'm a father, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm the founder of the RTI Empowerment Center. And uh, my mission on earth is to help the youth avoid the pitfalls that I was able to avoid when I was growing up. Now, living in such a small community, it's easy to not only be undermined by others, but to undermine yourself in the process. So going through, I'm just gonna have them each list an example of a time that they've been undermined and how they overcame it, whether it be physically, mentally, in school, in work, and et cetera. And then afterwards, I'm gonna see if I can grab a couple of responses from the audience too. Because sometimes there are ways that either you're discriminated or you discriminate yourself and you're not even conscious of it. Throughout our journeys, we're all gonna go through a lot of different things. And what it really comes down to is how you look at those things and coming up with a plan to figure out how to get out of them. Um, being undermined or being taken advantage of or you know whatever it is, it's gonna happen. Now, my own personal experiences, uh, my love of thinking, I've always been ahead of my time, just like this young lady here, like you're, you're like amazing. I hope you know that. Um, and my, my father has always been a big inspiration. And he, also, he always gave me a level of thinking that was not, you know, compared to anyone out there. And I'm very fortunate and grateful for that. So, to be able to navigate through things, to be able to navigate through adversity, I've always been able to do so because I said, hey, it's my journey. And I trusted the process no matter what. No matter what I go through, it's meant for me. It's on me to be able to determine how do I get myself out of it, how do I navigate around it. Because we're all going to go through ups and downs. Life is a roller coaster. Some of us, and it doesn't matter how old you are. You know, you could be 10 years old. Your life could be a roller coaster. There's people out there I know. And one of the reasons why I do what I do is because I know how fortunate I am and I'm extremely grateful for that. I know how privileged I am as a young black man to have his father around to be able to give him positive advice. So being able to take that advice and be able to, uh, being able to apply it to everything, it has set me up for the success that I have today. 
I don't have any negative thoughts, and whatever thoughts may come my way, or whatever sayings may come my way, I, I just kind of let it pass me by. Of course, I get agitated. Of course, like you know, I have my moments. We're all entitled to those moments. We're all entitled to those moments. Go through those moments, reflect on those moments, and figure out how to get yourself out of those moments. And that's what I continue to do. So that's how I. For me, a time where I felt undermined was just mentally just being in the real estate industry. There's a lot of you know older people that are that you are around, and just being so young mentally, I was like, I don't know, like just who would want to work with someone so young? And I started at 18, and um, that was something that bothered me a little bit. So um, just I just made sure I networked with as much people as I could. Set clear goals, and you know, once I once I realized that you know it was able to be done, I worked hard to get to the, my work. You know, to get just a quick tidbit. Thinking back, I think this is about this is pretty soon. This is three or four years ago. Um, my major. I'm going into school into engineering, aerospace engineering. And it's a very common fact that there's not many women in the field. And four years ago when I began my classes, uh, I went down to a university. I sat in a lecture hall. There was only five people in the classroom, and I was one of the only two women. That day, at the end of class, uh, the professor told me I should drop. He said, stop coming. He said, I think you should find something better suited for yourself because there's no room for a lady in my classroom. Now, fortunately, I have, I'm, I'm fortunate to have a father, a black father, who sits there and motivates me every step of the way. And a time that I've been undermined, that moment in itself, it wasn't even what broke me. What broke me is that I went home and I convinced myself that he was correct. And my father looked me dead in the eyes, and you guys ever have those, uh, Back, way back when, those, those back to school cuts where your parents shave you straight, slick bones come into the classroom. My dad came to my room and he goes, How's class today? I said, There's not going to be any more class. Told him why. Goes to the bathroom, gets a razor. I'm thinking, My African traditional father is going to shave my hair because I was, I was saying I didn't want to go to school. Turns it on, he says, Give me a haircut. So what do you mean give, give you a haircut? He's like, it's not going to look good. I don't know how to say it. He, he takes the clip off. Give me a haircut. Sit down, shaving his hair, I'm crying. And he's looking at me in the bathroom uh, mirror while I'm shaving his head. And he goes, who am I to look good if my daughter can't even look at herself in the mirror and be proud? Who am I to say that everything I've worked for in this country is valuable if my daughter can't even work on herself? So times that you've been undermined, or times that you undermine yourself, I want you to think of everything and everyone, both before you, currently, behind you, who have raised you, and the people that you're going to meet in the future. A large part of my students now, they come in and they don't think that they can do the type of mathematics, English words, public speaking that I teach them, but you have to set an example for the students behind you. Leave a legacy. That's what you were born for, regardless of what anybody tells you. I love the fact that I'm okay with another female, right? So I'm like, there's a lot of males. <laughs> uh, but I'm honored to be by the spirit right here because she's so elevated. You're so elevated beyond the years, and I love that. And I love that for you, and I love that for y'all. Y'all get to experience her like we are. Um, I'm always underlined, naturally, because I look young. A, B, I'm a female, I'm a black female. I'm in a male-dominated industry, but how I show up is in my power, but first with love. So that's something that I carry very, very true to my heart, is to lead with love, rush and your greatness shall follow that. Um, I never let nobody tell me 
don't put your limited beliefs on me because I'm not the one. That's just how I move. Um, I've had people tell me in the past, like, um, for example, well, it's, it's a common example, um, men should run the household. They should be the leader, the protector, the provider, right? Um, that's the traditional way of thinking, but years have gone by, things have changed. And I've actually sat in front of a man in the real estate industry. Sorry to you. And I, he was sitting with his wife, and I told him that I'm a licensed financial therapist. And he had the audacity to say, wow, women must really need you. And I looked at him, and I was about to give him some fire. But luckily, I had a friend to keep me calm. And she was like, no, she jumped in, and she was like, so can you explain to me what that means? Because he just said a contradicting sentence prior to that as he was going out, he's working hard, and then he gives the money to his wife to take care of everything. So he's giving the money, and then he's passing it off, right? And in that moment, I realized, look, look, you don't even hear yourself because you're passing off your power, right? You're saying money is power. Um, how do you not want to be informed about the money making decisions that's being held within your household. We don't value ourselves. A lot of times when we're talking money, we're talking, talking about it from a non-realistic point of view. Because some people say, oh, I want to make 300000 in two months. But they really have no plan. So I take people down to GPS, right? That's your goals, your plans, your strategies. Because if you don't even understand that and it's not aligned, you're not going to get to the very place that you're saying that you want to be. So, in terms of being undermined, I get it all the time. But I'm a beast, and I know that. And I'm very confident in what I do. Because I know exactly what people need to hear, whether you don't want to hear it or not, but it's real life. Things happen, life happens. A lot of times we're trying to avoid that conversation until something happens. And then you're forced to have that conversation. I give people the opportunity to make the choice on your own and not be succumbed to having to be forced into doing something. Because that's the worst place you want to be when you're trying to figure out your emotional state with your movements. Uh, I felt like I've been undermined my whole life. Uh, I think it started off with me having a, a, a speech impediment. Uh, for those who don't know what a speech impediment is, you know, the basic term is I, I stutter. So, I think it began with me, it's out of me, and what I thought, people thought of me when I spoke. So it used to cause me to get into a lot of fights um, throughout my middle school, high school, even up into adulthood. And uh, it took me taking full responsibility for my life and then figuring out how to uh, train myself to feel great about myself when I'm communicating my thoughts. And um, that kind of shifted me, undermining me, right? I think it's, it's, it's within. And uh, the second time I felt undermined is when I was trying to start up my business. I was struggling for about seven years. So I couldn't take care of my kids. I couldn't pay my bills. I was behind on my promises to myself and others. And um, I had a family member. I'll leave that name private because the camera's on. Uh, but um, she told me that I should leave the dream that I have for myself alone and I should work at the post office. Uh, they were hiring. And uh, I'm not saying anything, there's anything wrong with working at the post office, but I had a dream and I had a vision for myself. Uh, and in that moment, if I listened to her, I would have given up on my vision and I would have opened up my empowerment center. If I gave up on that vision, I wouldn't have became a motivational speaker. If I gave up on that vision, I wouldn't be here speaking to you right now. So what I'm saying is, there are gonna be people in your life, your family, might be a parent, might be a sibling, your, your aunt, might be your friends, that's gonna undermine you, that's gonna uh, doubt you. But you can't doubt yourself. And if you don't doubt yourself, your, whatever you dream of, whatever you envision for yourself will come to fruition like it did for me. Well, the reason I asked him that question is because a recurrent theme that you definitely hear in your responses is one, 
negating self-doubt, and two, blocking out the opinions of people who are not a part of your own self-hearing. So think about that. The biggest lie you probably have been and will be told is that it's not that easy. People are going to sit here and put roadblocks in places roadblocks should not be, would not be there without them saying them being there, and will not be there if you do not acknowledge them. Honestly, my three steps to life is a what, a how, and a why. What am I going to do? How am I going to do it? And why am I doing this? You can apply that to everything. What are you going to eat in the morning? What are you going to wear? How are you going to do your schoolwork? And most importantly, where are you going to be? So think about it for a couple of seconds. A what, a how, and a why. What do you want to do? How do you think you'll accomplish it? And why do you want to accomplish it? So I'll go through, and I'll ask them that question. But after, be ready, because I'm going to ask one of you. All right? Yes? yes. yes. Uh, thank you. in what I'm doing, they'll have the motivation to do the same things. 
I haven't always been the, the loudest person or the most outgoing or the most intelligent and etc. But it wasn't until I looked behind me and I realized that the kids who were looking at me were doing way worse than what I was doing. Honestly, the two children in the back, Lisbeth and Mia, my students, current students, almost graduates, every time I look at them, why I'm doing what I'm doing is because I see them achieving the things that I couldn't do in a million years. Learning things faster than I could, completing things faster, getting certificates from MIT, passing their bags. A road to a PhD is, is a lot of education, but it's also a lot of self-discipline. And I gained my discipline in seeing the success of others and leaving my success planted within the others at home. I think that, 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 that's all about it. That's all I got. My what? My long-term goal is to work very hard on my obituary. When I say that, is how will I leave this world impacted if anything were to happen to me tomorrow? Um, and for my kids, I don't just want a legacy, I want a dynasty. Um, how? Continue to leave the love, continue to trust in my God that I believe in, continue to trust in myself, continue to impact the world the way I feel I've been doing so, and um, I really do want to create at least 10 liquid millionaires in the black and brown community within the next 10 years. So if I can reach that goal, then we'll be able to reclaim our wealth, we'll be reclaiming a whole lot of things that are owed back to us, and we can start creating something different in terms of not just mindset, but just living for our children. Um, why I do this, my kids, my kids, my upbringing, um, getting tired of seeing, I'm pretty sure this is something you guys go through, but within the family, when you see an uh, aunt from when you was young, and they still do the same thing. It's like, dang, you ain't changed all these years, like, you had time. I feel like I'm changing, you're not changing, and we have to change the, the narrative, so that's my why. For me, aside from continuing to help youth avoid the pitfalls I was able to avoid, I want to teach entrepreneurs how to give themselves and their family a great quality of life. Uh, unfortunately for me, while I was in the process of figuring out how to bring my dreams into fruition, uh, I wasn't giving my, my family and my children a great quality of life. And in the process, my mother died. Um, and it was a guilt and shame that I had to live with uh, for many, many years because I didn't get a chance to have or experience the fruits of my labor. So I want to uh, show other people's learning curves, and, you know, teaching them how to get to where they yearn to be uh, before it's too late. Right? And being, being too late is not just for you, it could be for your loved ones. And teaching them how to understand that uh, you don't have to wait until you have enough money to take your loved one out on a night on the town. What you have right now is enough. Uh, you don't have to wait for perfect moments. The perfect moment is right now. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Uh, Romeo Bone, you said you weren't going to discriminate me. You see, I'm the, I'm the youngest one here. All right, now I asked for some audience interaction. We got a what, a how, and a why. Can somebody give me a what, a how, and a why? What you want to do in the future, how you think you're going to do it, and why you're going to do it. See, beautiful, thank you. What I want to do is, I want to be an aviation mechanic. I want to work on aircrafts, I want to work on airplanes, you know, hoverpoppers, all that fun stuff. And I plan on doing that by 
surrounding myself with people who have similar interests, going to school, doing to do, taking aviation classes, taking mechanic classes, and working on hands-on things, like working on a car. Even though it's not nearly the same thing, it does have its similarities, so I plan on doing that. I plan on working with more parts. And why I want to do it is because it's been my dream for years. I've always been interested in the sky. I've always, at first, you know, I want to be an astronaut because sky. But I've always just been interested in getting up there, and I want to, I want to just do something for the world. And for me, that is giving people a safe flight. And I, I don't know. I just think it'd be really fun to work with my hands, and it's always been my dream.
how many people can I make, you know, or influence to want to be better in life, or want to pass on, do, you know, just pass on positivity. I'm a positive energy. I do my best to stay in that realm, um, and that's how I continue to measure my success. And if we discuss wealth, that's that's my wealth. That's my wealth. The way I look at wealth is, it is to me there's all types of wealth. You can be wealthy in the things that you acquire, the assets, the businesses, the companies. You could also be wealthy in just your connections, the people you know. That could be a way of wealth. Uh, just who you are. Someone say, oh, I, I know, uh, say, uh, Royale. That, that can be a way of you being wealthy. People who know who you are and what you do. There's many forms of all things. That's just the three examples that I have. For the last one, um, I'll give you an example. Uh, for one, as Roy said, success, right? How you measure success? I say uh, keeping the promises that you make with yourself able to keep the promises you make with yourself and of course with others, then that's that's success. That's a form of wealth. Another one would be um, uh, wealth is not just financially, it's mentally, it's spiritually, it's physically, right? And, and, and I feel though all those things work together. And uh, the last one, the last one, leaving the world better than when you came into it, right? Even the world better than when you came into it. And I'll say the last one. The last one is, uh, for me, I want to continue to live even after I'm gone in a physical form. As a financial therapist, because I have to go through this question with people all the time, um, and they're all right. Nobody's wrong up here, but it's true. Wealth is measured in different forms. Um, but ultimately, after collecting my own data in different conversations, it essentially comes out to security. Um, how are we buying the house and securing the fact that the house is bought and it stays in the family? How are we buying land and making sure that land is kept in the family? How are we moving on where, like, if you have young children and something happened to you, that the person that, you know, are you, is your kids gonna go into the system? Security is like the ultimate measure of wealth for me. And seeing that a lot of people have these little gray areas where it's not secure, um, you're tainting your own wealth. And that could be mind, body, spirit, all that stuff. So when we talk mental wellness, that plays a part in everything, and I'm pretty sure y'all hear this, starts with mindset. Everything. If you're trying to grow, it's mindset. Why do you go to school? You gotta change your mindset. Everything's mindset. So. Let's give a big round of applause for our parents.
six-week program. Uh, we focus on art, media, and gardening. So if you're in a wave program, raise your hand. All right, I see a few of you. So let's get into the awards. We have some awesome peer leaders by the name of Laurencia and Jaden, if you guys can come up. Give them a round of applause. So I'm going to hand it off to Laurencia first, who's going to give out our first award. goes to most innovative innovative it celebrates a youth who embodies the spirit of innovation consistently leading the way with ingenious ideas that empower their peers helping them to excel and prosper this award recognizes the vital role that innovation plays in shaping the trajectory of both individuals and organizations inspiring a generation of forward-looking leaders the most innovative award goes to cherish religion Coaches up here, Jalissa and 
Hallelujah. So our first award is called the Extra Mile Award. This award is a form of recognition given to individuals who consistently go above and beyond their expected duties or responsibilities. And here we go. The winner is Darius Gomes. <laughs> commitment to community engagement, actively involving with their youth interns in meaningful projects that contribute to betterment of the community, which is extremely important. The winner of this award is Sub, sorry, Subwera. Subwera. Let's hear it for it. Let's go. All right, so our next award is the Most Improved Award. This youth has demonstrated the ability to understand the importance of being able to accept constructive criticism and apply the suggested changes to their tasks and projects going forward that exemplified their understanding of why the changes were needed. Sounds pretty good to me if you ask me. So the most improved award goes to Emmanuel DeCanto. Where are you? shows day in and day out that their selfless contribution and willingness to lead a helping hand, the recipient has set an inspiring experience of how teamwork and supportive interaction can elevate the success of morale in an organization. This award is going to none other than Leo Jelen. Here for Leo. Our next award is the Empowering Future Leaders Award. This award acknowledges an employer who has recognized the immense potential of young talent and has dedicated themselves to providing an enriching and empowering summer experience. The winner of this award is Kitty Haven.
So next up, we have the most professional award. This youth conducts themselves professionally at all times while setting standards for others in programs. They arrive to work always dressed professionally, always on time, and always ready to communicate in a professional manner. I like that one a lot. So this award is going to none other than Alicia Bonilla. Let's hear it for her. All right. Our next award is going to be the most innovative. This award celebrates an employer who has embodied the spirit of innovation. They are consistently leading the way with indigenous ideas that empower their youth, employees to excel and prosper. We need that. This is beautiful. And the winner of this award is Supreme Luxury, and it will be accepted by Archie. 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 You guys want to vote for? Let's go. Give it up for both of them. Don't get this one. Let's hear it for him. Let's hear it for him. This next award is called the Leadership Award. This award speaks for itself. This nominee has strived for excellence and has shown leadership potential during their summer employment. This individual is dedicated, hardworking, dependable, and works to support the mission of the organization without seeking recognition. I love leaders. One thing about me, I love leaders. And this Leadership Award is going to Mara Beretta. <laughs> until the end. And this award goes to Maria Bell Lopez. Come on, Maria. And, and it's her birthday. Happy birthday, Maria! 
Clap it up for her. Come on, clap it up. All right. Last but definitely not least, the employer of the year of war. Drum roll! Drum roll, drum roll. <laughs> the employee of the year award is a recognition given to an outstanding employee with an organization. This award is presented annually and serves to acknowledge and reward employees who have demonstrated exceptional dedication, performance, and contributions to the company's success. The winner of this award is Next Level. Give it up. That's still, that's still a reason to be winning. You're alive today. It could be much worse. Right? Right. right? It could be much worse. You're alive. You're here. You ate some food. Free food at that. You guys are happy about that? Yeah. Oh, you guys are greedy. You, 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 you guys are greedy. You want to take free food? <laughs> All right. All right. To close us off, we are going to have Michael Joseph. Bless y'all. Good night now. <laughs> we want to thank all of our employers that helped us out this summer. This was a this this was a whirlwind of a summer. Um, everyone did a phenomenal job, from the employers to the staff to the youth that participated. As David said, there's a special reason why you're here today. You made it. Thank you all for being here. Thank you all for participating. We're gonna do this again next year, and next year we're gonna do it much bigger. Is everyone with that? Yeah. yeah. It didn't sound like everyone was with that. Is everyone with that? Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm talking about. All right, so tomorrow we have another kickoff. My man Dave Edwards said it yesterday. Uh, tomorrow we have the, 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 the backyard, backyard boogie. boogie. Thank you. The backyard boogie. I want everybody that's here to attend tomorrow. I want you to bring your, your friends, your family, your whole neighborhood. It's, a, it's an experience. If you didn't experience last year, it was a, if, if you like free food, uh, prizes, you know, just hanging out with phenomenal people, you want to come tomorrow. So is everyone going to be there tomorrow? Yes! That's like half the room. Let's come ask one, one more time. Is everyone going to be there tomorrow? Yes! Where are we located at? 34th School Street. Where? 34th School Street. All right. Free prize for everyone. <laughs> yes, 34 School Street. We're kicking it off at 1.30 tomorrow. All right? Everyone's good with that? Yeah. yeah. All right. So before you leave, make sure you take a picture in the back. We also have a picture booth on the other side. Make sure you get your highlights in. Make sure you network. Your network equals your net worth. So make sure you do that. And we will see you tomorrow. Have a great night.